filament. It's called strontium-90, and its half-life is 28 years. And we're going to start with 80 milligrams of strontium-90 for our problem. Find a function that models the mass remaining after T years. Well, hopefully you're going, oh, this is just like the problem we did, except it's in half-life. What does half-life mean? Right, it's how long it takes to get to half of what you started with. So if I have 80, then in 28 years, I'm going to end up with 40 milligrams. That's what that half-life is. So longer half-lives means it's going to take a lot longer to get down to half as much. Shorter half-lives aren't so bad. So what should I do to figure out the model for this particular element, strontium-90? By the way, is that 90? going to have anything to do with the calculations of my problem? No, that's important to the chemistry people, but not to us. So what do I do? No, not 28. Okay, so I'll start up. At zero, I had 80 milligrams. Okay. At 28 years, I'm now down to 40 milligrams. Yep, so far so good. Maybe I shouldn't stand in front of the example that you can use. Now what? set up. We know after 28 years we're down to 40. We started with 80. So here is our setup to help us solve for the decay rate. Now, here's a question for you. Over here, R was a nice positive number. It was a growth rate. What kind of number are we going to get out over here? A nice negative number because in order to be decaying, we have to be having a negative growth rate. You have to be going down. All right, so we solve this the same way we solved over here. Divide both sides by 80, so that'll give me 1 half equals e to the r times 28. And then the next step in solving this one was? Change form, so the new form will look like? Natural log of? One half equals R times 28. And then finally, the last part for finding R is a natural log of one half divided by 28 is going to give us R. That'll give us our model. We were told it was the M of T, right? M of T is equal to 80 times E to the natural log of one half over 28 times T. So there's our model. How much of this 80 milligrams will be left in 100 years? How do I find that out?
we get? Uh, something's wrong with that. Anybody else got an answer? I got 6.729. Anybody else agreeing with that? Is that a reasonable answer? And how do I know? I'm going to actually go to 7295 because that 5 would make me round up. And so, yeah, think about, so here's how I'm in 67, which I got the first time because I didn't have the right number on there. Uh, wasn't right. Because in 28 years, I know I'm down to 40. 100 is more than 28 years, so there's no way 67 could have been right. In another 28 years, so that's a total of 56, I'm down to 20. So, okay so far? And in another 28 years, what's 56 plus 28? 70, 84, I'm down to 10. So I'm definitely going to have to be less than 10. Another 28 years is going to be more than 100. And so I need a number that's going to be less than 10. So you can think about these and decide, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's a reasonable answer. Whereas we knew that 700 something wasn't going to cut it because, A, that would be growing as opposed to decaying. And so we know that's bad. But anything that's bigger than 10, we know has got a problem if we think about what the half-life means. Now, let's see what the last question is. How long will it take a sample to decay to 20 milligrams? You should be able to answer this without actually doing any math up here. How'd you get 56 years? Oh, well, because we just went through it, didn't we? Well, so let's look at our 20 milligrams. Our 20 milligrams is half of a half of our original 80. So those of you who get lucky on this problem and have a nice little half of a half because they didn't make them all that way, you'll be able to just pop out an answer saying, well, this is one half-life gets me to 20, I mean to 40, the second half-life gets me to 20, so two half-lives is 2 times 28. So that's how we get down to our sample of 20 milligrams. What if it wasn't a nice number, what would you do? So if you had to actually do the problem, what would you do? Plug in what and where? Plug in 20 for what? Plug in 20 for M of T. So you would plug in your 20 equals 80 times E to the natural log of 1 half over 28 times T, and then solve that for T. And you guys know how to solve this for T because you essentially just did it over the same process over here when we solved for R. Because I know now some of your web work problems are nice like this, and others don't come out so nice because they just randomly pick some number for you to get to. But again, you should be able to decide, is this a reasonable answer? Because by determining whether or not you're half, more than half, 